Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I'm here with my real tight homegirl, Beatrice. Sup? We are here to talk Vanderpump Rules. Yes, bitch. This show gets people crazy. I know. People get triggered. They have a lot of opinions mm-hmm. about the variety of cast members. All these terrible people. I know. <laughs> and they are kind of terrible. I mean, all of them. Is there one cast member on VPR that is hands down, like, without blame, innocent, and awesome? From what you've told me, No. Yeah. Well, from what you've seen and from first what I've couple seen, of episodes, no, yeah. not really. I think they're all, no. you know, they're all human. Absolutely. But there have been a few people out there. I know on Reddit, um, people are really standing for Ariana. But then you go to Instagram and people are coming for They are dragging Ariana. her. People and you go to hate her. Twitter and it's just a dumpster fire on Twitter. They hate everybody. <laughs> That's why Twitter's great sometimes, yeah. though. I, I can't. I can't do Twitter. Well, you never know toxic. what you're going to see on your timeline. Uh, well, now, yeah. yeah. No, thank you. Thanks, Elon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but before we get into the episode, we want to remind you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast and we're actually very proud of the fact that we have our own opinions and we do not apologize to share them with you and they're not always going to line up with your opinion get over it and i think that's okay it's good to have conversation and look through a nuanced lens at reality motherfucking television it's not that big of a deal and so if you're okay with that then welcome to the dumpster but if you're so for real you might want to find yourself another podcast baby but we hope you stay because we like to have fun here we do like to have fun here. And if you want to hang out with us more, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We got ad free episodes, uncensored content. If you want to see how crazy we actually get, <laughs> go on to Patreon, bitch. And if you are on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. We really do appreciate thank you. anything you give us on the YouTube because it helps us to grow our community. So thank you in advance. Thanks. Uh, Before we get into the episode, I do want to ask you what's your major takeaway? for season 11 episode 2 entitled Ultimate Betrayal is. Okay, James. Uh. <laughs> My takeaway is that I'm kind of riding for Ariana and her pettiness a little bit. Like I, I That's because you're a petty bitch, girl. I am a petty bitch. You love you I'm going to admit bitch. it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to admit it. And maybe that pettiness will catch up to her eventually in a bad way. I don't know. But I don't really care because I feel like Sandoval, you kind of need to you know lie in the bed that you made for you yourself. fucked around you and fucked around. now you're finding out and stop being a little baby about it and like we talked about it last episode it's not okay to hate these people so much that they want to unalive themselves right of course be not so fucking cruel like we can chill out a little bit on the internet yeah the internet's so fucking toxic already like maybe stop contributing to that mm-hmm. but at the same time with how ariana's treating sandoval for how he's literally ruined her life like yeah dude that's that's what you get right i mean it doesn't make it right it doesn't yeah. mean that you know ariana has the higher ground but like right. she has every reason to be upset with you you're the one as she says in this episode who broke the home yeah you're the one who fucked everything up and now yeah. you can't be crying over here complaining about oh i'm, I'm being hard on you sorry okay. and let's keep in mind that this episode is being filmed approximately three months after everything broke right and so, so it's, it's fresh. really fresh for ariana and yep. yeah maybe she's being mean yeah maybe she's like a little bit in her boss bitch era sure. a little bit mean girls but i'm kind of living for it me too and tom sandoval is a worm with a mustache and he's, he's a complete a narcissist yeah and i didn't like him at all in this episode because all he did was what about isms to try and get out of taking <sighs> meaningful responsibility for the shit that he did but we'll get there yes so my major takeaway was the following colon <laughs> <laughs> i hate brock yeah yeah i hate brock so the last couple of seasons that sheena's been dating and or marrying brock Mm -hmm. i mean he's kind of been a non-motherfucking factor but i've always just been able sniff test i could tell intuitively this guy's looking for clout Mm -hmm. he's looking for shine this was the best day of his life when he met sheena and got her to fall in love with him because i don't think this dude works oh yeah i don't know what he does but the way he talked to sheena when sheena was trying to set up a babysitter with her friend and her mom and brock 
Um, she's struggling with OCD and postpartum issues, which, by the way, I struggled with as well. And maybe we can talk about it at that time. Yeah. But it is hell on earth For to sure. deal with that in your brain. And the fact that Sheena is going through so much, trying to take care of her child, being so afraid, and Brock with his fucking big legs just <sighs> sitting there yelling at her in yeah. front of her mom uh huh, and in front of her best friend. Yeah. Like he has a reason to be able to do that. Like, like he's upset with her for having intrusive OCD thoughts right. by telling her to just let it go. And I want my wife back. So centering himself in her pain and trauma, like making it about him and like, when am I going to get my wife back? Like, what? What are you doing? Like your only job, sir, after having lost your children right. and hit your previous girlfriend slash wife or whatever. Is that what he did? Yeah. <gasps> oh, shit. Yes. So he's a piece of shit. Okay. He's a piece of shit. Your only job is to take care of Sheena right. and to be there for her and accommodate her and make sure she has everything she needs to thrive because that woman is paying all of your bills and probably your child support. Yeah. And you're sitting here looking for a moment and you're yelling at this woman right. who is subsidizing your whole ass life. Like you can fucking miss me with that. Yes, he was coming on very fucking hard. Mm -hmm. And it's so mm -hmm. fucking annoying when people tell people who suffer with like in chronic anxiety or OCD, oh, just calm down. Get over Let it, it go. It's like, it's not that fucking easy, my guy. It's not how it works. No, it's like telling a depressed person, be happy. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I didn't think about that before. Right. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, it's one thing if you talk to her and be like, hey, you know what? I want you to get help because I don't want you to be so unhappy like this. And I really want to do everything we can to fix this. So you're not living in this chronic, mm -hmm. horrible, awful headspace all the fucking time and like just have some fucking compassion right but just to sit there and yell at her and be like just let it go like he's manufacturing a moment right like it, it definitely was, felt it, like it was that. something felt like he was trying to produce a moment for himself that as made her cry to, yeah and made her mom mad yeah and pissed off her friend God. and for what like i don't even understand your point right like she's trying to actually do what I think you're asking her to do, which is like line up a babysitter so you can go to the fucking club or whatever and have your, you know, t moment. Mm -hmm. But it is hard for her. Yeah. Is there anything better that you have to do than take care of your wife? Right. You asshole. I'm sorry, but I, I was triggered. Yeah. By Brock. And I just feel bad for Sheena because like I said before, she's always picking these losers. And there have been rumors about... Brock cheating and I think last week I actually said that the rumor was that he cheated with Lala but I think the rumor was that he cheated with Rachel <gasps> I don't think he did I don't yike I don't know that Rachel would have done that but again I wouldn't put it past her mm -hmm. but I think a lot of people are just seeing something in him yeah that is duplicitous yeah. and opportunistic I don't even know the dude from the show really because I've only seen season 10 and last week I said he gives me cheater vibes mm -hmm. he just doesn't give me good dude vibes he seems like an asshole all the time and it just sucks for Sheeta because she seems like she's a nice person seems like she's well I think she's yeah. probably got yeah. a nice heart yes yes she's very yes. superficial though and she's yeah kind of a little shallow a little shallow narcissistic with her fucking emo comeback for her good music. And, gold. Oh. <laughs> and the weird screamo that she did we'll get to it well we will it's I mean but I weird. do need that to stop yes um, so before we get into the other thing I wanted to talk yeah. about was because I know you're standing for James and you think he's handsome, which I don't get it. He's I don't just think like he's a big handsome. Head, the balloon head. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't want to body shame. Though was that body shaming? I a apologize. Bit. Actually, that you. was rude. But I just he's got a very big head. In yeah. any event, I know you're standing for him. You think he's funny. He called Tom Sandoval a worm with a mustache. Which is he hilarious. Had all of these moments. And yeah. you're right. Those were great. And that's the thing about James. Like he's got these different facets. He's very funny. He's yeah. got a lot of charisma and energy however mm -hmm. in the last week or two shit has been coming back to the surface about james because what? the rumblings have been around for a while that james is allegedly a physically abusive person what case in point with Kristen, who you've not met yeah she was one of the ogs i really like Kristen. um she was in a relationship with James. This is how he got on the show. He uh -huh. was a fucking fan, like Raquel, like fucking Brock. That's hilarious. He was a fan. He got on the show. He started dating Kristen. And they were at, I think it was, was it Katie's wedding, guys? I think it was Katie's wedding. And they got in a big fight, James and Kristen. They went out back. Kristen hauls off and hits him, which, by the way, is wrong. Yes. And then he puts his hand on her and, like, pushes her into the bushes. 
And Bravo cut that part. Why? Not the part where Kristen hits him, but the part where James puts his hands on Kristen. I don't know why Bravo did that. Okay. But Kristen has subsequently come out and said, and I paraphrase, that James is absolutely physically abusive. Whoa. And he hit me. And we also know that he spit on Kristen, which, by the way, also constitutes abuse. Of course, yeah. Or assault um, and is abusive. But then there was this thing with Raquel, because, of course, James and Raquel dated for quite some time. Right. And during their dating, Raquel ended up getting a nose job. Okay. And she didn't, in my opinion, need it. But, like, Mm -hmm. I feel like she's very much insecure inherently. Pageant And so, yeah. yeah, So she went and she got this uh, rhinoplasty. But then she had to get it again, like something had happened to her nose and she had to go back and get it like reset back in position. And the story at the time was that uh, James accidentally tapped it. Well, now Raquel is coming out in the year of our Lord 2024 doing her own podcast and other podcasts. And she's saying that more had been going on behind the scenes between her and James, that she never spoke about it because she did not want to ruin James's life. She does not say directly Mm -hmm. that James hit her, Mm -hmm. but we all remember how James tapped her nose and she had to get surgery for it. Mm -hmm. And what would be so bad that it would ruin his life? It would have to be something pretty terrible. Yeah, something to get him super canceled yes. and kicked off the show. Yes, and last but Yikes. not least, another thing that's been talked about in the last week to two weeks is this interview that Lala did about her sleeping with James because they slept with each other, yeah. by the way, when James was with Raquel yeah, and Lala was with Randall, that um, turtlenecked toad that I was telling you that about. That nasty mofo. <laughs> that yeah. pickleball playing turtleneck Pickle. toad hood. Yeah. When they were with other people, they slept together. But the way Lala found out about it is she woke up the next morning after having been blacked out, don't remember anything, have no idea what the fuck I was doing. The next morning, wakes up after being blacked out, sees a used condom, and she looks over at James and she's like, did we fuck? Uh, he's like, yeah, babe. We fucked. Yike. And the interviewer at the time said something like, well, I mean, that feels pretty problematic to me, Lala. And Lala's like, yeah, I don't blame him for that. Like, whatever. Okay. So she doesn't blame him. But I do. I mean, a little bit. I mean, that's... Ooh. I don't know if James... James could have been blacked out, too. Like, I don't know, obviously, the whole situation. Well, they're friends now. They're very much friends. So... And I think they support one another um, in terms so, of the cast. Like they're there for each other. But yikes. I just think when you look at it globally uh-huh. and all of the things that are being said about James Kennedy, I feel like, first of all, he's a fucking problem. And it, if it comes out to be confirmed that he has been physical, I think he needs to get fired off this show. Yeah. I think he needs to g- 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 go. Right. He has no place to be here. I don't- and. I find it rich, and I know I'm filibustering and I apologize, but I find it fucking rich that you're standing up screaming at Sandoval, who, by the way, is a piece of shit. For okay. sure. Unequivocate. Objectively. Like, un- unequivocated piece of shit. Yeah. But like, okay, you cheated. You hit people allegedly. Yeah. The way you talk to people is fucking toxic and abusive. Like, sit your ass down. Thank you. Well, and like his excuse for it is because it was just the drinking and he was young and he was a 20 year old. I don't care. I don't hit people when I drink. Do you? No, but I don't drink. (laughs) So I mean, but if you did, I don't think you would hit anybody. I think it has to be in your nature to do something like that. Yeah, I think so. But I think alcohol can influence people too. I think think alcohol brings out who you truly are in vino Hmm. veritas. Hmm. I think it shows who you really are and it amplifies it. Hmm. So I just, I'm sorry. I just don't like James. And of course, the the highlight of this entire episode is his conversation with Sandoval. It is, yeah. And Sandoval brings out some of the shit that he did before. And it is really not a good look for Sandoval. And it's just another example of Sandoval being absolutely unable to take any responsibility and just say, I was wrong. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, James is a piece of shit and I'm going to fucking stand on it. And I don't care if you guys are mad or not. Well, no, I mean, it makes me change my opinion about him a little bit because last episode I was like, ah, I kind of like him because I like his bold energy and he's very fucking like direct going to call people out right. for being pieces of shit. But he's a piece of shit. But he's a piece of shit. Well, everybody's a piece of shit on this show. It seems like everybody's 
fucked up. Like everybody cheats, everybody drinks, everybody's fucking toxic, everybody's self-centered. Katie everybody's... doesn't cheat. Well, no, she doesn't. And I think she's the only one, right? I think and she's, she's the like, only one, but I mean, she can be toxic too. Like, she's yeah. kind of a yeah. mean girl, right? She has so... been. But I have been. Like we all have been. Of course. And that's what makes us attracted to this cast is that yes. they represent a lot of us, like flawed and all, but we love them to it, some degree. Yeah. It's like true reality um, TV. But I don't love James. No. I'm just going to stand on that. All right. Okay, let's get into the episode, toots. <laughs> okay, bitch. So we start off at Ariana and Sandoval's house. And if y'all recall, Sandoval returned last episode from his um grueling reality TV show so shoot. Tom. It was so hard. You guys don't even get it. I he, was beat down. He literally says in this episode, it was the hardest thing of my life. Okay, Like, Tom. really? That was the hardest thing of your life? Okay, dude. <laughs> Fucking loser. And he's talking about how he's dealing with all of the hate that he's getting and how it's been really hard on him and so he's been taking out that energy at the gym which is a good thing sure but he's not doing it in a good way he's just doing it just because he's superficial wants to look hot he's performing it's all his healing journey and also keep in mind at this point as he's filming yeah. He thinks Raquel's coming back because right. Raquel was in talks at this time to come back. Yes. Negotiating, I think, the amount that she would make, but also like contemplating, is it worth my fucking mental health to come back? No. So he's thinking she's coming back. And so a lot of this is for Raquel, if you ask me. Oh, for sure. Because he even brings her up. He's like, I'm still very much in love with her. I hope that we can still give our relationship a real chance. And I think about her all the time. He says he stopped drinking uh -huh. for her because she's in a facility and she can't drink. Although he's literally drinking beers in this episode. They so. could be like zero alcohol beers. They look like alcohol. Okay, they were I Heinekens. Know. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> but I don't know. He's just giving off this vibe like he's like i'm working on improving myself but he's i'm like in his redemption era and apology okay. tour whatever the best thing to me about this was his assistant Anne, who seems very demure and very sweet timid and timid but also just i mean there's something about her that's just really sweet she's working for tom i don't think she's working for ariana but she is acting as a mediator between tom and ariana and yes. tom Wants to have a birthday party. So yes. the next day, he's turning 40 fucking years old. 40 years old. Elder he's, millennial. He's an elder millennial. They're the worst. He's an elder statement, statesman of reality TV. He's yep. turning 40. He wants to have a... He's turning 40. I know. Actually, when you think about it... What? That's a fucking huge milestone birthday. Yeah. Like, that's a big party that you yeah. can, like have... Uh, if you're Tom Sandoval, you would have a hundred people. You would have a live fucking show. Uh -uh. You'd have celebrities, a red carpet, a photo op. But he's got these weirdos, these randos that we've never seen before and never want to see again at his dumb party because he's paid for extras. He's at the bottom, honey, of the barrel. I know. This guy. So he wants to have a party. Yeah. And he's telling Anna, is it her name? Anna or Anne. 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 Like, can you talk to Ariana about this? Because you don't want to party. Yeah. This is my house. Yeah. I just want to use my house to party. <laughs> and Anna's like, oh, I don't know if she's going to like that. And he's like, that's fine. I'll send her to a fancy hotel. Yeah. I whatever she covered. wants. It's great. And Anna's like, okay. And then Ariana shows up and Anne asks her whether she'd be open to maybe going to a nice hotel because it's Tom's birthday. And she's like, yeah, no. Absolutely not. And if he brings a lot of people here. I'm going to call the cops. Yeah, I'm going to call the cops on him. I'm like, bitch, okay. I get it. Like, you want to be petty and I'm stuff like that. kind of living for it, though. It's kind of funny that she's being like that. Like, I'm going to call the cops because I know how his parties have been in the past and I don't want to deal with that shit. And I'm like, that's, I mean, I guess. Okay, but. I get it. You, you live bought in a house with house. that guy. You bought a house with that guy. It's one night. You can also get a fucking hotel or go and stay at Katie's house or something like that right. and be away for the night. It's not that big of a deal. But she's being petty and I'm kind of here for it. Yeah. Because fuck she's going to make it hard. Any moment of joy for him, she's going to try to make that hard. And he deserves that. Low and I, I love that. Now, what I wanted to ask you about mm -hmm. was her treatment of Anne because online on social media, yeah. and I'd love to hear from you as well. She's getting some heat for how she spoke to Anne because some people felt like she was super condescending. Like, mm, I'm going to exist in my house as I always do. Thank you. And so, I mean, there was a vibe of that. Mm -hmm. To me, though, I felt like 
that was definitely aimed at Tom, not Anne. Yeah. Like, and al- also the cameras are there. Sure. So she's saying that as a proclamation directed at Tom. Obviously, it's going to be filtered through Anne. Yeah. So I don't think she was trying to be mean to Anne. But at the same time, I can see how somebody might say, you could be nicer, Ariana. I mean, she could be nicer. She comes off very harsh. And I mean, that's fine. Like she's in her, like you say, boss girl era mm-hmm. or mean girl era. Big and dick energy it. era. And that's totally fine. But like Anne, I don't know if you noticed, every time she texts Ariana in the show, like they zoom in on her texts to her and she's always saying, hi, um, sorry to bother you. Um, So uh, is it okay if Tom has some friends over? So sorry. I know it's a lot. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like she's always doing that in every message that was shown in this episode. So I'm like, well, do we think that's Anne's personality, which is mm-hmm. demure and timid and mousy? Or do we think that's because she's been groomed to be afraid of Ariana due to our outbursts from Ariana? As a chronic apologizer myself, yeah. who's <laughs> always like that because I'm a people pleaser yeah. and I don't want to rock the boat or upset people. I'm kind of in the habit of like always apologizing for being a perceived burden. So like maybe part of that is Anne's personality yes but at the same time I think Ariana is kind of intimidating I think for oh yeah somebody as timid and mousy as Anne Ariana kind of scares her a little yeah bit, and she's a little harsh so yeah. I think it's a bit of both yeah I I don't know that I would ask Ariana to change anything though no, I mean I mean and I and she was not to me in my opinion overtly rude to Anne she's just like no thank you I'm gonna exist in my life right I don't I personally don't think she would be mean I just don't think if she was mean to well Sandoval though in their relationship case in point though did you know that Anne has since stopped working for Tom Sandoval and she has her own Instagram bitch oh and she's posting on her own Instagram in cheerleading outfits with team Ariana oh (laughs) okay so then yeah, okay. I feel like maybe we can trust that Ariana wasn't terrible to her. She yeah. was just in a terrible position. And again, three months after Scandaval. So Ariana's like just trying to figure out her bearings. Right. And she's still fucking mad and pissed yeah. off. So and that's fair. Um, and then at some point, Sandoval's weird friend, Jason, comes over. Who? And he's not even like a friend. He's his band manager. So okay. Like, the only person that has to talk to him probably that Tom contractually. Pays. Yes. Yeah, he pays to be in his life. Yes. So it's not like he can just cut him off. He comes over and acts like he's friends. He's like, hey, bro, what's up? And they're talking about like the party and everything. And of course, Jason's being a total cuck. And he's like, yeah, you deserve that was a party, Sandoval. Like, fuck Ariana. What's she going to do? Call the police? They can't kick you out of your own house? Thank God. And that's true. But it's just like how far up Sandoval's ass he is so he can be on TV and perceived as a man. But he's not a man. Well, and what's so weird to me is he's like... He's a suggestion of a man. I know. I look at Sandoval and I'm like, why do these men like suck his dick so hard? Like, I don't understand they why They think they're... he's cool. He's not. He's so fucking lame. But... but- Men think things are cool that women don't That's think true. are cool. That's true. So we don't under like men. I I read some some reports that oh, men really? think that women think that Ryan Reynolds is the most handsome man in the world. I mean, he's handsome, but not the I most. I mean, in a Jimmy Stewart kind of way. I guess, yeah. Like women don't think that Ryan Reynolds is the most handsome man in the in world. The whole so world. Men yeah. have no idea. So I'm sure this Jason guy <laughs> was fucking approximation of a beard. And his fucking gold chain and stuff. I'm sure he's looking at Tom Sandoval as the ultimate man. <laughs> he probably does. This is the alpha apex <laughs> predator of a man. I want to be just like him. I want to be around him all the time. I want to get all the pussy that he gets. This is how I'm valid as a human <laughs> by being by him. It's just crazy to me. It's and so cringe. Tom needs him so badly. That's the oh, sad yeah. thing is Tom doesn't have anybody. He doesn't have Schwartz. He doesn't have anybody anymore that likes him. He needs constant hype men around him and he needs constant friends around him to make himself feel like he's still liked and he's still popular and he's still the cool guy. And it's kind of like so cringy. Like it gives me the vibe sad. of like... It, well, yeah, it's hella sad, but it gives me the vibe of like the guy who peaks in high school. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like where they just get older and yes. the older they get, the more washed up they get and the more yeah, pathetic they get. But they're they still get. in their mind yes. living in their senior year where they were the yeah. quarterback for their <laughs> yes. high school team. And they were so hot and all the girls loved right. them. Like, I like the fucking dude. prom king. You don't get it. <laughs> prom king, bitch. I know I paint my You're nails 45. white. I know. <laughs> you work at the 7-Eleven. 
<laughs> or Sandoval. You live with your mom. You have a fucking cover band, dude. Oh, like phew. one of the people what? that were that was at his birthday party uh-huh. was his vocal coach. Did you see that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Bravo put that on there. I was like, oh my God. Thank you, Bravo. Thank you, producers. That is so embarrassing. That's his life. I know. That's his persona. Because he has nobody. And like, you know, it would speak volumes if he just fucking owned it. And he was like, yeah, I'm just going to have a lonely 40th birthday because I fucked over all of my friends and I fucked over my girlfriend of nine years. And this is just what I have to deal with. But I'm going to try to be a better person. No. You're going to have a dumb fucking party with these weird fucking friends. And he even says out loud with his own words and mouth, I guess I do have friends, huh, guys? I know. I guess I really do have friends. Like, that you have to say that makes me want to cry for you and light a candle in the Catholic Church. Maybe that's why he got the white noise machine so so Ariana can't hear him cry himself to sleep. (laughs) So he can drown out the thoughts, the intrusive thoughts that he has in his head about what a loser he is. I can't listen to it anymore. (laughs) Jesus Christ. It's so and then crazy. the cake comes that says Sandoval is a liar. And he just, it's the last fucking straw. <laughs> you don't get it. You don't get how hard it is to be me. Help. It's pathetic. It's really great. I know. It's the show is really, really great. Funny. And then we get to Lala and Ariana getting smoothies. Uh huh. And this was kind of interesting only because Lala is calling out Ariana for her bullshit. Right. Because Ariana is telling lala like yeah tom wants to have a birthday party but i told him no because how dare he have people over to our house well actually it's my house right (laughs) she acts like that and lala's like who cares why don't you just set a boundary also legally it's his house and he can do what the fuck he wants to do in his house party america thank you like get over it ariana and like why don't you just set a boundary and say hey can people just be out by this time because i gotta do shit in the morning and ariana is like well and did text me uh-huh. after saying i'm sorry yeah and, and suggest that maybe they could leave by midnight and that's fine so we'll do that and lala's like well why do you even want to be there it why doesn't are you living make it there? make sense yes it doesn't make any sense i'm like why do you even stay and ariana just keeps coming up with you know excuses and i mean i get it it's a few months after scandal it's hard like how do you fucking figure out where you're gonna go and then you have this fucking house that you guys bought together which is a big mistake <laughs> then you have all these things that you have to untangle and all of your they bullshit they didn't just buy a house together beatrice what they do they took out a home equity loan on that house which ariana <sighs> co-signed so that tom could subsidize his really cool rock band are you serious yes she co-signed a home equity line, which is like a second mortgage. It's a mortgage on top of your primary mortgage so that he could be a rock star. Wow. Wow. See, I mean, things like that, when that comes out, I'm like, I understand Ariana's pettiness. It's like she was wanting to spend forever with this guy. Yeah, they got into a relationship under kind of fucked up yeah. terms. Like, But we were all young ones, other honey. Yeah. Well, and also I was thinking about it while watching this episode, like, he, she was with him for nine years. So yeah, they got on, got together under terrible circumstances, but he was probably telling her like, I would never do that to you. And like, sure. you're my one and only. So she probably believed him because that's what you do when you're digmatized and you're in love mm-hmm. and you overlook some of the red flags. And so I feel bad for Ariana because it's like you imagined living the rest of your life with but this why doofus. she could see him just like we could see him she could hear him just like we could hear him yeah. she hated him just like we hated him a lot of the times yeah but she made know, the decision to take out a home equity line on girl. her fucking house and extend herself so he could be tom sandoval and the most extras like take some responsibility for your dumb decisions for real you should have dumped him years ago yeah tom, you should have dumped her years ago mm-hmm. but he she didn't he didn't and yep. now she wants to be petty. And yep. I kind of like Lala saying, well, girl, you can't do that because mm-hmm. that's his house and he should be able to have a birthday party. It doesn't matter anyway. And also, he's just trying to get a rise out of you. Why exactly. are you giving it to him? Exactly. Here's my question. What? Do you think that Ariana and Lala like each other even remotely? Mm-mm. No, I think they are just fake friends for the camera. I totally think this is a produced yeah. scene. I don't think Ariana wants to be there. I think Ariana knows based on what happened in the last episode when Lala said, I talked to Raquel because I think mm. I need to be with her. Yep. Uh, or somebody needs to be there for her. I think Ariana's already over her. Mm-hmm. I think she's showing up because she has to. It's her job. But I think Ariana hates Lala. And oh, probably. at the end of the season, when we see Lala saying, 
How do you become God just because somebody cheated on you? I think we're seeing this fake relationship start to fall apart. Which I live for. Me too. Truly. And then we get to, oh, I know, at the smoothies, they were talking about Ariana's new boyfriend, Dan, who yeah. is this 40-year-old unicorn of a man <laughs> who's right. never been married, never had kids. And Lala asks her, like, you know, are you changing your perspective on having children? And Ariana's like, yeah, I think it depends on the person. And so I guess you were saying that people yeah. are hating Ariana for changing her mind because I guess the whole entire time she was with Sandoval, she's like, fuck no, I would never have kids. Mm -hmm. They have a flashback in this episode where they're like looking at a house or something and Ariana's like, I would never have a kid with him ever. Sandoval's like, I want three or four of my mini-me's running around on the earth. Mm -hmm. Good Lord. Right. Um, so why are people giving her hate? Because why is she so willing to give this new guy that she's known for two seconds something that Tom asked for for nine years? Well, Tom sucks. Well, then that's the answer. Like, honestly, <laughs> yeah. that's the only answer is because she was with Tom and yeah. she saw her partner. And if I could project, I would or speculate, I would say that she probably knew it would be on her to take all of the emotional labor and all the physical fucking labor with children. And yeah. she would be the one to take care of it as he's off fucking touring and fucking all these bitches with his lightning fucking necklace, <laughs> thinking he's the shit. So she knew that wasn't going to work. I think there was also innate like uh, aversion to children and maybe not mm. wanting it but people change that's true and the thing is that people are allowed to change and women yeah. can make up their mind from moment to moment they have agency over their body and they can do that so i think i, I don't i don't think it's a fuck you to tom as much it is as it is uh ariana realizing oh other people exist that mm. won't treat me like that. Right. And oh, like maybe I would want to have a family with people like that. Maybe I could have an actual genuine partner that reciprocates yes. the same energy that I yes. give in. So yeah, I think that's fair. And I mean like, girl, get it. You but have she, your yeah, embryos. She is being called out on social media for that right now. Yeah. And speaking of kids, we talked about last episode about how she and Tom fertilized their embryos or whatever that they have. And I, I guess that's wrong. Okay. I don't know. All Some right. people in the comments were like, no, that never happened. Okay, chill. Like it's then not why are they fighting legally over it though? Uh, she says my children. So maybe they did. And maybe that'll come out in this season. Who fucking knows? Who cares? It's reality TV. <laughs> right. But I'm just like, I just wonder if that's the case because it's of that preview. Implied. Yeah, it seems like it. But oh my God, could you imagine that kind of a legal battle of having to deal with yeah, like well, your Sophia fertilized embryos? Yeah, well, Sophia had to do that with her ex-husband. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, it was a terrible battle. Is it resolved? I think it is. Like, I think she gained control over her embryos, but he fertilized them and he wanted them because he wanted to bring them into fruition and make babies so he could Whoa. get child support from her because <gasps> she was the star. Oh, So shit. like, it's a whole thing. I don't know if her eggs were fertilized. I mean, I think that Bravo is trying to get us to believe that they were worse they're mm -hmm. going to fight about it but who knows we'll see i i want the legal battle stuff to be on this season dude yeah, me too i want to hear all the tea all of it please please then we get to some nothing burger scene which is about pumps closing party or whatever which is one of yeah lisa vanderpump's many restaurants well yeah she's having to close down because it's um too expensive the economy is hard for everybody honey yep. and uh but this is one of her most famous bars like is I think, it yeah i think like Vanderpump Rules, Pump, Vanderpump oh. Rules was a part, Pump was a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, but the most important part of that scene, I think, was her conversation with Tom Schwartz, no? Yes, because Schwartz is talking about his resentment with Sandoval and like how fucked up it was that he just left him hanging dry with this fucking bar that they spent so much money and so much time and effort making. And then after Scandoval happens, Sandoval decides to go on tour with his dumb band right. and just leave Schwartz to handle everything. Hold in the bag, honey. And Lisa Vanderpump has some weird fucking take with this. And in her talking head, she's like, well, I think Schwartz is, you know, being kind of hard on Sandoval and that he shouldn't be blaming him 100% for the downfall of Schwartz and Sandy's. And I'm like, how? What the fuck? It's yes. because of Scandoval that yeah. people were leaving all those fucking terrible reviews and people stopped going, I think, to the restaurant. Although I think a lot of people also did go to the restaurant mm -hmm. because of the notoriety of right. it. But to hear Tom Schwartz tell it, like, they struggled very much so. Mm -hmm. and, and they were losing staff. Tom leaves to go on tour and we'll talk about that mm -hmm. and whether that is a viable option. <laughs> and Tom Schwartz, who really doesn't have any experience in this business other than what he's uh, picked up by osmosis from being <laughs> on the show, like is having to figure everything out with his curmudgeon of a partner. Yeah. Because they have another partner. It's not just Tom and Tom. It's this other dude. Ugh, messy. And 
I feel bad for Tom Schwartz, but he has to open his fucking mouth. He seems to be okay with opening his fucking mouth against Katie Mm. and not sticking up for Katie. I wonder why. Because he's in the boys club. Because he's gay. (laughs) Uh, That's my gay conspiracy. I didn't mean that, but like he's always ridden ride or die for tom sandoval and used to be Jax taylor like it was those guys they were together no matter what that's crazy bros before hoes and he took that into his marriage and that's why his marriage failed so now he's in this really interesting position i think where he's gonna have to stand on his own two feet you want to be a man yeah be a fucking man now you don't have a wife who's gonna take care of it for you right now your friend is off touring and leaving you to take care of everything else now what tom schwartz what are you gonna do and the thing is I listened to the entire uh, Vile Files podcast Mm -hmm. with Tom and Tom. And Tom Schwartz has not changed, unfortunately. Like, I think producers are trying to make us think that he has changed and he's going to stick it to Sandoval. But he is not. In this interview that took place in January, so last month, 2024, Tom Schwartz is running interference for Sandoval. He's answering questions for Sandoval. He's so annoying. Sandoval's representative and attorney. Just sucking his dick. Like, why? Just deep throating that shit. It's so cringe to me. Like, why? Like, if James and Sandoval were apparently such best friends and James can sit there and call him out on his shit and be like, fuck you, dude. Like, I don't want anything to do with you. Why can't Schwartz just, like, grow a pair and do the same thing? I don't and, know. And, like, call him out on his stuff. It's because he's a Libra. It's because he's got mm. so much Libra in him. Okay. And According to Ali, yeah. Yeah, he mm-hmm. does. I mean, we looked at his birth chart. Yeah. It's like, he's got so much Libra. And that's not a bad thing. It's I do just, love a Libra. I mean, Libras are great. It's just sometimes you open the door to be walked on over you're because, spineless yeah you sometimes can't fucking you're stand up for it yep mm-hmm. so he needs to get a fucking grip in my opinion and then we get to um sheena and brock at that freaking dumbass recording studio whatever with her emo stuff it's bad her music's bad the flashback to her music <laughs> oh video in 2019 which oh i need God. to watch looked like softcore porn i'm like it was what are so you terrible doing? She had a song back in 2019, and that guy that was in that music video worked at, I think, Tom Tom was his Ugh. name, Brett, something like that. And Cringe. she had a crush on him, and he was just like not into her. Was she dating Brock at this time? No, she oh, okay. was not. She was trying to date this guy. Ew. And he didn't want anything to do with her except to bang her. And so she Ew. featured him in her video, and it was fucking terrible. And you even hear Sheena say in her talking head, like, I'm not the best singer. Yeah. And after that That's video, obvious. I'm like out. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz this is not working for me. Should have stayed out. Focus on other stuff. So now she's back in the studio. It's me redemption. It's my return. And she's doing is it good as gold again? I just I don't oh, know. It's everything's some weird bad. emo thing. Well, she thinks it's emo music because she's screaming so into the mic. Terrible. And it's just really cringe. But Make Brock it thinks stop. it's sexy. Does he? Yeah, no. This he's is a my first goblin. time in a studio. Ooh. I love seeing my wife in her element. Why do you so have hot. to be there? Why do you have to be everywhere that Sheena is? Money. Why can't you go fucking figure out your own shit? Get your own fucking business going, you weirdo. Maybe he's cheating, dude. Like am I, I said. Am I, being, am I being too toxic? no i'm sorry i hate him (laughs) i mean he seems like an asshole get up off her for real then we get to sandoval meeting up with schwartz he brings him those shoes as a like peace offering or something Okay, that covers it like no problem uh yeah okay sorry for abandoning you with our business that we went in together here's some shoes because i'm such a good friend right and you can tell schwartz has so much resentment so much anger for sandoval and he starts to talk about it a little bit because sandoval's like what you mad at me and schwartz is like yeah dude you uh, fucking duh, left you duh. went on tour and then you went on that dumbass reality show and you left me alone to deal with your mess and your bullshit well but you don't understand i mean it's been really hard for me like i had to go to this boot camp show and i was just like working so hard it's the hardest thing i've ever done in my whole life what about me don't you understand how hard it is for me like absolute no ability to take responsibility to like pause even None. just for a second Mm -mm. take a breath my guy and introspect and say you know what that was shitty let me just apologize and not make an excuse not even one excuse Mm -mm. he does not know how to do that he's insufferable (laughs) it's similar to cody brown like can't ever take any accountability for your fucked up bullshit and you give half-ass apologies of like well i'm sorry i didn't text you i'm sorry i didn't um 
follow up with you at all. I'm sorry you need me so much. Gosh, but are you still on my side though? Will you still back me up? Why'd you go on Jax's podcast and talk shit about me? Why don't you say that fucking thing to my face? Because you weren't here. Because you were gone. Because you were on tour in New Zealand. Because you went to New Zealand. Because I've been doing fucking work, making up for your absence. Dealing with everything. Fuck you, dude. And Schwartz says at the end, because Sandoval's like, well, are you going to back up with me? Are you going to be with me or not? And Schwartz is like, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do what's best for me. Which dude. is a lie, though. I know. He's got no spine. It sucks. He's doing that for the cameras. It makes me so mad. He goes into the next months and again into this year still advocating for Tom Sandoval. And look, Sa- Tom Sandoval, I'm not saying he's irredeemable. And I've told you I liked it. There have been seasons he's my favorite in I the whole get it. cast. I don't understand But it. Tom Schwartz, would you please get your own spine? Would you Just... get your own mouth? Would you get your own purpose? Grow up. Grow, grow up hair, dude. Like, I just don't understand. And this is what makes me realize that Katie was right about everything in the mm-hmm. last reunion. Because, you know, I've only seen season 10, y'all. I'm not going to watch all the rest of the season. You should. Maybe they're, I will. Re- they're very good. You I probably really will. Should. Maybe in my free time. But it's going to take me some time oh, yeah. to get all the context. But anyway, Katie last reunion was talking about how uh, Schwartz just never could defend her, never take her side, right. never be there for her for as his wife. And it's obvious now like i'm just watching all this shit i'm like you're saying all this crap schwartz about how you're gonna do you and take care of you which you should you should Mm -hmm. fucking worry about you for once and stop caring about everybody else like take care of your fucking plants stop sucking sandoval's dick like he's this cool dude and you want to bow down to him like he's so fucking cool he sucks he also always has to have an alliance and so to see him go over to james and Allie's house i know and i'm like to get his chart chart read which i think is very cool Mm -hmm. but i'm like what are you doing and i felt that way last week when he sat down with james who by the way is very problematic Uh and he knows james is problematic and james was super cruel and awful to him last season like why are you sitting down with this guy after that reunion and he screamed at you like because you need an ally you can't stand on your own and it's similar to how sandoval needs friends and needs mm-hmm. people around him needs hype men right shorts is the same way maybe that's why they get along probably and they fucking are symbiosis joined to each other yep. and that's why maybe they had some gay experiences together well okay that's what i'm thinking all right gay theories and conspiracies <laughs> i'm just gonna keep gay bringing fantasies. it up i'm just gonna keep bringing it <laughs> let's up. fantasize together in a I'm gay just, way i could see it and it probably would be sexy. Yeah, I mean, not to me, but you know, like some gay guys would probably be like, "Yeah, you like male gay porn." No, I don't. I bet you do. No, you know who does though. Okay. I shouldn't say. <laughs> I <laughs> do know who does. Though. I know. Who does. Anyway, next scene. Anyway, and scene. Allie and James's house. Sh- Allie's reading Schwartz's ca- chart, then, which I would have snoring. I would have liked to hear more about the astrology. I'm snoring. But Sandoval texts James, and that gets interrupted and sandoval's like hey dude i'm having a b-day party can you come and james is like okay i guess i'll show up and then we get to tom's birthday party with all of his fake friends menagerie of weirdos uh, and rando coach some rando extras like that guy who walked up to james I know, who was he? what was that guy's name he walked up to james and he's like yeah i've been meaning to talk to you because like <laughs> After everything that happened, like Katie has pushed me out of the friend group, and James is like, like "What?" And your name is? Who are I mean, you? who might you be? Although hmm. I was reading on the subreddits, honey. You're always on the Reddit. I'm always on the Reddits, and they were saying that this person has been in the periphery of the entire friend group, and after Scandal happened, he actually came out against Katie hmm? and maybe Ariana, and like did Instagram what? real stories lives talking mad shit about them clout and goblin. is a piece of, yeah is a clout goblin and is a piece of shit and so it's very funny to me that the producer showed that i mean that's him going up to great. james who does not give a shiznit james doesn't even look at him dude i'm here to talk to tom i'm here to produce You're a moment with tom peasant with your weird shirt <laughs> get the fuck away from me like yikes yeah if that were me i would be so embarrassed dude i would <laughs> i would so change my name be so embarrassed i, I would change my hair color I, I would move to montana i would start a horse ranch i would get the fuck out of west hollywood For real wow how embarrassing well and then eventually james tries to get sandoval to go and talk to him sandoval keeps just like blowing him off it's so weird because he doesn't want to have the conversation no, where he has to take responsibility for any of his actions it would be too hard but james ultimately is like come on let's go sit out and talk about this and james is like so you owe me an apology um you betrayed me 
Uh, I betrayed you? <laughs> How so? Well, you, you slept with my ex-girlfriend who I was years ago. engaged to. No, no, no. This is James. I, he didn't say this. I'm speaking for him. <laughs> you slept with my ex-girlfriend who at the time I was engaged to that I loved that you fucking helped me propose to her. You paid $25,000 out your own pocket, Tom yeah. Sandoval. Yeah. So I could propose to this girl in a wonderful fashion. And then you fucked her. And that's terrible. So yeah, you did betray me, even though I'm with Allie and I love her mm -hmm. and I've up leveled. That's still a problem for me. And instead of Tom saying, you're right. Yeah. He just says, that was awful. What about you fucking Kristen? Yep. Which 10 years previous. Please elaborate on this because I feel okay. like if this was 10 years ago, they would yeah. have hashed all of this shit out by now. They, well, they did. And that's kind of, that's kind of James's point yeah. in the after show. He's like, um, but we've gone on to have all these experiences, become really good friends. Right. I mean, and if it didn't bother you five years ago, three years ago, one year ago, why are you bringing it up now? How is right. that relevant? Um, but 10 years ago is when... Tom was with Kristen. They were in a relationship. Kristen was cheating on Tom with Jax and other people. It was terrible. Oh, wow. Okay. So. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so great. You really got to go back and watch those early seasons. <gasps> okay. And then uh, Tom, I think, was cheating with Ariana as well. But so Tom and Kristen break up. But he's friends with James. And in fact, James is a bit of an outcast. Uh -huh. He's not well liked by the rest of the OG crew, most of which are not there anymore. Mm -hmm. He's on the outskirts. But Tom and Ariana take James in and also Lala, by the way. And so they're friends. Mm -hmm. But James ends up fucking Kristen. After they broke up? After they broke After everybody's broken up. Okay. Who cares? And fucking him fucking Kristen on tom sandoval's bed i guess which is a, a big gross. deal i don't know whatever and then proceeds to go into a relationship with Kristen. so james and Kristen enter into a relationship with tom which tom knows mm -hmm. and doesn't really seem to have a problem with at the time okay and so that's what tom is using weaponizing in the current moment to say to james well but yeah i fucked your girlfriend after you broke up but didn't you fuck my girlfriend after we broke up so why are you so pressed well and is that the only betrayal that james is referring to when he says like you that was like the ultimate betrayal because james also talks about how he was pissed off that sandoval just ousted him from the group for like the last six months of him and raquel's affair and like gaslit him and treated him like shit so like i don't know what the context of that is yeah i don't know i don't really remember tom ousting james that okay. much i don't so, remember that to be the case but i may maybe i was not paying attention i mm -hmm. think the bigger point that tom is trying to make is that you're being a fucking hypocrite this is exactly what you did to me yeah and james and rightly so i think is just like i'm not even listening to what you're saying i'm getting up i'm getting myself up out of here because you are unwilling to admit that what you did was wrong that's based i mean mm -hmm. it's freaking stupid it was 10 years ago like i get it if it hurt but like i was watching this twice and i'm like sandoval this has been hashed out mm -hmm. like this had to have been hashed out right. the last 10 years why are you bringing up old shit well and i'm like were any of us the same people 10 years ago no. absolutely not so i'm just like i would be so frustrated if i was james and so he just gets the fuck up and leaves at the same time though what okay at the same time what i from a meta global position, I can say, but James, you do shady shit. You did shady shit to him as your friend sleeping with his ex. You did shady shit because you slept with um, Lala when you were with Raquel and she was sure, with somebody else. Yeah, yeah. You are shady too. And that's the point I think Tom is trying to make. It is an ill-timed point. It's germane. I mean, it's true. Right. I think the right thing to do if you want to salvage your relationship with James is to say, I was wrong, period, yeah. point blank. And here's what I'm doing to get better. And I'm sorry, man. I want a relationship with you. And this is how I'm going to demonstrate to you that I'll never do that again. Right. I just think like the whole reason why Sandoval is even bringing it up, though, is not to call out James's hypocrisy, but it's to just take the heat off of to him. deflect because he just doesn't want to. He can't take, take it. it. No. And I mean, I get it. Like you received a shitload of hate. I mean, you lost all of your brand deals and stuff and like your life was ruined. But that's all at your own hand, Sandoval. Mm -hmm. Like, so I don't know what you expected. <laughs> I really don't know what you expected. You should have just broke it off with Ariana. Of course, yes. And then got with Raquel right after. That's fine. Whatever. I mean, that would have still been problematic. But sure, like you could have at least in integrity. Exactly. Addressed it. But, but the way can't. you did it with lying. And yep. again, let me remind you 
Raquel has said in podcasts in 2024 that Tom Schwartz and his apartment was a safe place for them to meet and rendezvous and fuck that and fuck and hang out. So, so lame. Yeah. So I'm just saying he, he knew what he was doing. I wonder if Schwartz is going to start getting hate for that. Like, why hasn't anybody been calling him out for that? Because Raquel only said that last month. And so they've been mm -hmm. filming since May of last so year. So that's going to be in the reunion. Maybe. Bitch. Maybe. I think Tom is a fucking liar. Yeah. I think Tom is covering. I think he's covering for Tom Sandoval, but he's also covering for himself and what a for fucking sure. duplicitous piece of shit he is. 1000%. Yeah. So after James leaves, because... Sandoval's being a narcissistic piece of shit. Even though Sandoval calls James a narcissist on the way out. Go ahead and leave. I've got all these friends here. I don't need you. Yeah, my friends. So many friends. I don't even notice that you're gone. And then James goes outside and pees on his bush, which I thought was great. I laughed. And Allie's like, it's also Ariana's bush. I thought that was cute. And I liked how Ariana, or not Ariana, I liked how Allie didn't go in because she didn't want to have any conflict of interest because she does value her relationship with right. Ariana. And I'm like, See, Very loyal. I like Ariana. Allie. I like her too. Why really are you like with her. James? Uh, Maybe she's changing him. Maybe she's good for him. That's possible. People can change. People can get better. From physical abusing. Okay. Well, but I mean, if he was a drunk, like, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't have any, I don't have any faith because I've heard so many bad things about James, but I'm just saying like, maybe Allie's good for him. Let me hear that he puts his hand on Allie. If he does, then he's I mean, a fucking okay. Please. motherfucker. No, she's and so sweet. I mean, for somebody so young to have such a good head on her shoulders, to be able to give a reading to Tom Schwartz and I be like, her. Let's, let's, this is your path forward. I feel like you're stuck. Like, I just, she's great. Yes. And she, she should be with about somebody everybody. else. I know, she really should. James, but it is what it is. Yep. We'll see how it goes. And that's pretty much the end of the episode. It says to be continued. Okay. Well, of course. I mean, I'm excited for it. Me too. But yeah, good episode. A lot of people, I guess, were saying this was boring. And I'm like, I love this show. <laughs> I, I don't know why that would be boring. I'm watching the after show. And I let me, let me tell Let's you Let's get this. into the after show a little bit. And I never watch after shows. I never watch anything, any right. extras of anything. Like sure. Married at First Sight always had those after oh, interviews. And I'm God. like, snooze. But I was watching that after show. Uh -huh. And I'm like, this shit is Anything in that after show that you find particularly interesting? Yeah, Ariana and Tom's finances and shit. Right, exactly. So last episode we were talking about um, Sandoval yeah. going on the Vile Files right. and saying that he offered to buy Ariana out of their house and he actually offered more than what the house was worth when they bought it, $3.1 million. And then in this after show, she's saying that was a measly sum of money right well, you don't believe her the, no the more interesting part to me was when she was asked whether she's paying the mortgage payments because what tom sandoval mm -hmm. is saying is, is that she has not paid her mortgage payments yeah. for eight months or something like that nor has she paid any of the bills and in the after show ariana saying yeah well i need an itemized accounting for exactly what i'm paying and he has not given that to me i've asked three times mm -hmm. and tom is like well it's the spectrum bill. There it is. I mean, she can see exactly what's coming out of my account. And so she knows what I'm paying. And Ariana's like, yeah, I need a different kind of an accounting for uh, the bills in order for me to pay. So what I thought was very interesting about that was how shady Ariana was. You think she's shady? Well, insofar as she's not paying him for... Mm -hmm the mortgage she's not paying him for her half of the bills like mm -hmm. you i mean maybe you don't have the exact amount of the mortgage like the mortgage is five thousand dollars maybe you don't know the exact it's five thousand seven hundred and twenty three dollars but you know it's around five thousand dollars you know that you are a legal owner of this home yeah you know that you are partaking of the bills and you know that they need to get paid so you should at least be tendering some form of payment consistently until such time as the accounting is tendered to you mm -hmm. so she's playing shitty games yeah but at the same time what i thought was really interesting beatrice was when she said that they refinanced their home in like 2021 mm -hmm. when the rates were so fucking good i yeah. did the same thing they were terrific and when before they refinanced the mortgage payment was coming out of their joint account right after they refinanced that payment came out of tom's account only which is weird 
which means she can't see it either. So she doesn't know exactly what that payment is, Mm -hmm. which is the basis of her claiming she doesn't have to pay him anything, which I think is wrong. But I mean, go off, queen. If you can get away with it, do it. Mm -hmm. My thing is, when they refinanced that home loan, did she get her name off the mortgage? Like, is her name still on the deed, right? Because she owns it. Right. But maybe off the mortgage because they refinanced it under his name. He took the mortgage. So is that a good or bad thing? It's actually a good thing because oh. that means she still owns it, but doesn't isn't legally responsible to pay for it. Oh. If she somehow finessed that. Mm, that's smart. I would be like. That's dubious. Queen. Fantastic. I love that. Well, see, my takeaway was like this whole thing. I'm thinking Sandoval's been lying to her because she says something like Mm -hmm. she doesn't know the real mortgage payment because she found out the payments that she has been making to Sandoval that he told her to make were actually overpayments. And so he wasn't telling her actually how much. But she knows she has to pay something, right? I mean, she knows she has to pay something. But if she was paying significant overpayments, she's probably like... You had all of this extra Maybe it's money a from seventy-five dollar overpayment. Do we know? Who knows? I don't Nobody know. Nobody knows, honey. I don't know, but I wouldn't put it past Sandoval to be trying to get more money out yeah. of her because he's a broke ass hoe, right? Who doesn't have any brand deals anymore? And doesn't not have like any money. she does. Not like she does. And he said earlier in this episode, he's so fucking broke that he had to go on tour. And I had to move like five hundred dollars from this account I was into overdraft. this account so I could pay my mortgage. You don't even know how hard it is so, for me. That's my thing. Is like I wouldn't put it past him to be lying. And it's their mm. finances just sound super messy. And I would just love to see all the. Coins. Oh my god! Yeah, just like, open the books. Oh, please! Them. I hope like Emily D. Baker covers some of the legal stuff if it actually gets crazy. If it does, I don't know if it will. It'll probably get. I think it, it sounds like on the vile files. Um, Tom Schwartz. Uh, advocating for Tom Sandoval was saying that they are in the Coke. process now of uh, selling, I think selling the house and trying to come up with what they're going to sell it for. They're trying to settle that issue now uh-huh. through lawyers. So Ooh, uh, I don't know that it's going to like go to trial. I think it's being handled. Yeah. And I did think it was interesting because Katie's with Ariana during this whole after show and Katie asks her like, do you have proof? Mm -hmm. Do you have statements to pull up that show that you have been paying him money? And Ariana's kind of skirting around it. And she's like, well, it's all in his name. So I just have proof that I've sent him random amounts of money. And I'm like, that's weird. Uh Like that's weird. It was very sketchy to me, Mm. but she has a lawyer. Yeah. And so I presume she's consulting with her lawyer. Yeah. And whatever she's doing is within the scope of what her lawyer said she could do. Mm-hmm. I don't think she's a dumb woman. Yeah. So maybe she's just fucking with him within the confines of what is legal to do. And you know what? Tom deserves it. He does deserve it. You fucked everybody mm-hmm. over, dude. And you're like trying to get her out of the house by buying her out which i think is pretty fucked up personally because i'm just like you don't fucking deserve that you don't deserve this house after you fucking ruined our life together but i built the gym myself i paid for it i put in the solar panels suck my ass (laughs) i think he's i think he's put in a lot of money well to design the house the way that and i just i feel like he's gonna take a loss because it's not gonna ever be dollar for dollar the Mm -hmm. dollar in that he puts into his gym is not gonna be the dollar out that he gets for it so i think he's worried about like the investments that he has made in the physical home which he's going to lose because you she's gonna sell it find out yep she's gonna sell it in a bad market for sure and you're gonna take a loss and i'm sorry but if you're gonna fuck her best friend and lie about it these are the things that happen that's what happens my dude it's terrible but like you brought it on yourself yep and now he's just gonna have to watch everything crumble and it's it's interesting because earlier in this episode i know this is like random but it just made me think of it schwartz when he goes over to Allie and james's house he talks about how he's bitter because they own a house and he's like i lost everything yeah i lost my house and i'm like sandoval is on the way to that yeah. Sandoval is about to lose a lot of his shit and he, I think he's going to get bitter too and just be like pissed off because now he's going to have to get some apartment in West Hollywood or wherever Inglewood right. like right. Rob he's probably going to have to rent some fucking shitty ass place because you fucked around dude and like Didn't that's just... Ariana also talk about like that too like if I leave my house now I'm going to have to rent somewhere yes. in WeHo and the rents are not what they were in 2021 yeah it costs a lot of money like why would I do that same applies for Sandoval exactly. and same applies for Schwartz like yep. both of them are going to have to pay rents and those rents are going to be high 
now you get to feel and what everyone else feels. This is what it is, my friend. Mm-hmm. Have fun. As you see, if you fuck around, <laughs> you will find out. <laughs> Perfect illustration of that. So good. I'm loving it. I'm glad you're loving it. I'm so excited for like every new episode. I'm just like, yes. You know what I heard? What? By the way, there's going to be a Love is Blind season six. I watched the trailer. <gasps> Does it look good? Because last season kind of looked meh. Well, I watched last season. Was some, it meh? Some, yeah, it was just like, mm, could have been better. Yeah. But um, it looks kind of interesting. Does it? Yes. It might be something that we should cover on the Patreon. Yes. Would y'all raccoons want to see it on the Love Patreon? Love is blind. Are you guys into that? Yes. No. What's up? Let us know in the comments below. We're always looking for some trashy TV to oh, consume. Yeah. We're still hungry. Girl. I'm and my si- Speaking of hungry, my 600-pound oh <laughs> life's coming out of it. You better believe I'm going to be March. watching that. Did you watch that trailer? I yes, know I sent bitch, that to I you. bitch, I watched that trailer. But I lo- I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, Jesus. I it's love okay. you. Jesus but I'm a human us. being. I love when I have somebody falling oh, yeah. out of a tree. <laughs> Uh, falling out of their chair or falling like into the into the ground i'm just like i i love that moment for myself personally yes and then they're always crying so loud about it i'm just like does it hurt it sounds like it hurts i mean (laughs) of course it hurts I'm a terrible person. Is that terrible? No, it's Should not Should we terrib- block this out? No, it's fine. Should this be uncensored? No, I I'm have- just saying that's why anybody watches my 600 pound oh, life. For sure. Please I fall. actually had some raccoons um, DM us on Instagram and they yeah. were like, is it terrible that I love watching my 600 pound life while eating a lot of food? And I'm like, no, oh that's God. literally what D and I do. <laughs> that's exactly what I do. <laughs> that's always what like we do. Like the worst kind of food. Like give McDonald's. me some nachos, Bel Grande yes. and then my 600 pound lives. I'm here for it 100%. Even if they're pooping the bed. <laughs> I'm okay. I can eat those nachos. It's fine. <laughs> Me too. So delicious. I mean. 2024 is looking good. Yes, girl. For us in the dumpster. So much trash. Well, um, before we go, is there anything else that we need to say to these the beautiful raccoons? I'll be all right. Oh. Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you like all of our videos on YouTube. Yes, subscribe please. to our channel. And then go to our favorite, your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review five. really helps us grow the pod and we really appreciate it so thank you we will be back next week to talk sister wives 90 day fiance and vanderpump rules again and until then never forget that we've got nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys <laughs>